What's going on everybody? I hope everybody's having a great day so far. So today, we're going to talk about, yes, the Georgie Padilla Tumba. Oh yes, you got to love it. Y'all know what day it is? It's Tutorial Thursdays. So to all the new subscribers, welcome to A Percussion Life. My name is Eric Perez. Some of you already know that by now, but just had to say thank you for subscribing. And I do hope that you enjoy these videos. And if you haven't subscribed already, just hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, find out whenever I upload. And yes, we normally upload every Monday and every Thursday, something new, something different, something fresh. And it's normally things that you request. And to all my day ones, man, seriously, I love and I appreciate each and every one of you guys, all the support you guys gave me in the month of April for Taco Tuesdays, videos completely in Spanish. Some of y'all saw those videos, even though you don't speak a little, little bit of Spanish, nada. And yet you guys supported me. So I seriously appreciate you guys and I'm grateful from the bottom of my heart for just the continued support you guys continue to give. But I got some sad news. Well, kind of not, well, yeah, I got some news. So for this month, I'm probably only going to be uploading maybe just once a week. And this may be the only tutorial you're going to get for this whole month. <sighs> Let me explain. It's kind of a surprise to everybody. It's gonna be better for me but I want to wait to share it and it's most likely going to be in the month of June when I'll be able to share this information with you guys but basically I'm gonna be crazy crazy busy from now until June and I don't want to overwhelm myself with making all these videos but I am going to try to make a video every Thursday for at least the whole month of May it's just that, you know, I got some things going on uh, and uh, yes, gonna be fairly occupied, but I will keep you guys posted when the videos are gonna be coming back again, better than ever. So other than this video, the videos you're most likely gonna get is uh, things that help me learn music and things that I research and allow me to deliver this type of information to you guys, just tools that help me day to day, kind of just get better on the congas or in percussion in general, and then just history, because sometimes we just neglect history and don't read you know, a book or something and don't study about certain people. So yes, I'm gonna most likely make videos about that. So please don't get mad at me if you don't see me posting just as often as I used to. But yes, I'm gonna be quite busy for this month. And uh, yeah, so don't, don't, you know, yeah, just stick with me. Don't worry, it's gonna be good for everybody. It's gonna be good for everybody. Trust me, you're gonna you're gonna love this uh, kind of wait. So yeah, just just wait on me. So the Georgie Padilla Tumbao. My goodness. So the year was 1999, and this young guy over here was in the middle of my time learning timbales. I was 12 years old, yes, 12 years old, learning timbales. I already had been playing for two years and I wanted to even get better. And at that time, I was really, really heavy on Richie Ray and Bobby Cruz. Now, if you don't know Richie Ray and Bobby Cruz, shame on you, shame on you. Those are the pioneers of salsa, man. You, you, you gotta know who they are. It's like, it's like obligado. It's an obligation. You gotta know who they are. And at that time, I was really, really heavy listening to them, trying to study their arrangements, trying to study how the timbalero will play. And in 1999, they released a live recording called Un Sonido Bestial, which they recorded in Puerto Rico. And as I was listening to that recording, I ended up bumping into finding out who their timbalero was, which in that recording was Edwin Clemente. And my goodness, that guy changed my mind how I saw the timbales, just the flavor, the, the pure technique and the purity and tones and notes, man. I was shocked and appalled at how good this player was. But as I was listening to that recording, I collided with this conga player. And this conga player sounded very different than the conga players I was listening to at the time. 
that played with the timbaleros I was listening to. The conguero had solos just as much as the timbalero had solos. And I was listening to a song called La Safra and I saw that the conguero went first when it came to soloing and it caught my attention. Keep in mind, at that time, I hated the congas. Yes, I hated the congas. They hurt your hands, they're stressful, everybody's so pressed on it. You have to slap a certain way to be qualified a conguero. You, oh, if, if you don't play four, if you don't play five. It, there is so much pressure to be a conguero that I just hated it. But I loved being a timbalero. I don't know what it was to, to put your stick up and kind of make the call and make the transitions and do every cut. I don't know what it was, but I loved being a timbalero. But at this time, this particular conguero was catching my attention. Every note, every tumbao, every solo that he was doing. I don't know what it was, but it always caught my attention. And there's three songs in particular in that live recording that I don't know how great he played this, but it was just pure clean all the way. No mess ups, just, just I don't know. It was just crisp and clean how he played throughout all those songs. One of the songs was La Safra, the other one was Sonido Bestial, and then the other one, which is one of my favorite ones, is called Los Fariseos. And he actually has a conga solo, which like marked my life. It's crazy, I'm here 12 years old, and I was so, like fueled into timbales that a conguero marked my life. And at the time, I didn't even know who this guy was. Fast forward three, four years later, here's 15 turning 16 year old me. And I start to play the congas. I hated the congas. I don't know what it was about the congas. And, ah, but I actually started to play the congas. And the first recording I run to that marked my life was Richie Day and Bobby Cruz Un Sonido Bestial's live recording concert. And man, I went and tried to mimic who this conguero was. I didn't, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know what, man, it, this guy was just so clean. Everything that I heard about him, every transition, every tumbao, it was just, I was always left in awe just listening to every track that he was on. So I started to practice to those recordings and I started to try to mimic every one of his tumbaos, every one of his solos. I tried to copy each and every note that he did because that was the only thing that marked me at the time that I could relate with from a conguero standpoint. And it wasn't until maybe five years after that until I found out who this conguero was. And look and behold, it was Georgie Padilla. This whole time, I was like, Who is this? Who? G Georgie Padilla. Who? At that time, being 2021, 20, the only people I actually knew was maybe Giovanni Hidalgo, Carlos Patato Valdez, Candido Camero, Tata Wines, Paoli Mejias, Rey Barreto, Anga Diaz, Changuito. That's probably about it. So when I hear Georgie Padilla, that this person, for some reason, isn't on this pedestal with all these other greats, it left me so baffled because me just trying to learn timbales, him being a conguero marked my life just on an aspect of catching my attention. And then I start to study about him a little bit more and I realized that he played with Sonora Ponceña, that he obviously played with Richie Rey and Bobby Cruz, that he played with Cheo Feliciano, that he's played with Frankie Ruiz, that he's played with Jerry Rivera, that he's played with Bobby Valentin. Georgie Padilla wasn't just anybody. I realized that this guy's like a living legend. And then I began to see his videos and see his performances and I realized, no wonder why this guy is so clean. If you get to see Georgie Padilla and you see his technique and you see his posture and, and, and you're, you're able to see like his, his proper hand and wrist movement, it's like unbelievable. Like he's able to get such a tone without moving much. And it's crazy because when you listen to it, it's pure clean slaps, it's pure open tones. When he moves around the set going fast and doing singles, you're like, what is going on? You don't realize that he's just literally. 
And that's who kind of like influenced me that you don't have to do much to get such a loud and clean tone. Because if you see his technique, it's so clean. It's so like proper. You, there's, there's no flaw in it. It's maybe him and Bobby Allende are the two that I see like their, their technique is just flawless when it comes to their hands. It's, it doesn't move. It's like consistent into one place, man. You, you, just, you just gotta love it. But then when you start to realize and you dig down a little bit on who Georgi Padilla is, and you realize he had many influences around him. He had little Johnny Rivero who he was playing with in Sonora Ponceña. He was also mentored by the godfather, David Lamor Ortiz. So it's you, you see that he has been able to blend all these styles into his own way. And he's crazy multi-percussionist. So he's able to then get influences from these other instruments to apply it into his style of playing. So the tumbao I wanna to share with you today that Giorgi Padilla did, I actually saw it in a concert that he did with Richie Ray and Bobby Cruz. And it's crazy because the tumbao that caught my attention was one that he actually did during the timbal solo. So he was doing this type of tumbao literally during a timbal solo. In other words, he was laying a great foundation, a perfect bed to still be somewhat noticeable but not a distraction during a moment that the timbal player is having which is crazy important man you don't know how many times like a congueros going off and doing crazy things while somebody else is soloing or while the singer is going off and all you're meant to do is just leave a good bed so people can rest and people could absorb whatever's going on at that moment. And Georgie Padilla did that. And yet he was doing something so crazy, so complex, so unique that it, it was like, how are you doing this in the middle of a timbal solo and still killing it? That's goals right there, man. That's goals. But you're gonna see a nice fusion of a wawanko and then a tumbao, normal tumbao that you would do. And I believe he was playing in a song called La Safra, and La Safra is played in two, three song clave, if I'm not mistaken, but you never know. <laughs> Let me, let me show you the tumbao that he was doing. Georgie Padilla is crazy, man. You got, to, my goodness, you gotta love that, man. That was, that was nuts. That was crazy right there. So let me show you what I'm doing. So if you notice, I kind of started in an awkward place. I normally don't like to start here in these type of tumbaos, just because it's a lot harder to understand it. But at the same time, it's easier for you to follow because that first note that I do is actually the one. So you're at least going to be able to understand it when I'm counting it later. So I start this tumbao with my non-dominant hand on the tumba from a non-dominant side. So I just do one open on there. And with my dominant hand, what I'm going to do is just one close slap. One close slap with my dominant hand on the gong. And then again, with my non-dominant hand, I'm gonna do one open on the tumba on my non-dominant side. So to put that together, After doing that open on the tumba with my non-dominant hand, I actually have to come back to the conga with my non-dominant hand and do a close slap. And after doing that close slap, I'm gonna do two opens 
on the conga with my dominant hand. So it's gonna sound like this. And to give you a clue, those two opens should sound like the two opens you do in a normal tumbao. So to put that together, it's gonna sound like this. After doing those two opens with your dominant hand, what you're going to do with your non-dominant hand, you're going to do a bass and then like a palm slap kind of with your non-dominant hand. And then you're gonna do a close slap with your dominant hand on the conga. So it's just sound like this. So to put everything together to this point, it's gonna sound like this. After doing that close slap with your dominant hand on the conga, what you're gonna do with your dominant hand is actually move to the tumba on your dominant side and you're going to do two opens there. So it should sound like this. Again, those two opens should sound kind of like what you're doing in a normal tumbao when you're playing two congas. So just to give you that trigger. To put everything together up to this point, it should sound like this. Now to finish the whole tumbao, what you're going to do is actually a close slap with your non-dominant hand on the conga and then two opens with your dominant hand on the conga. But again, those two opens should sound like what you're doing in a normal tumbao. So it's gonna sound like this. Now to put the whole tumbao together, it's gonna sound like this. to play it all the way through and if you notice you're gonna see somewhat of a delay from those two opens to when I'm starting over just because you want to give it kind of that wawanko from Havana feel all right so just to play it all the way through so you can get a kind of like a sense of what I'm doing it's gonna sound like this That is some crazy stuff right there, man. You got to love it. And if you wanted to add a little bit more spice, Georgie doesn't do this. He keeps it very simple, very clean. You know, no room for errors with him, man. He's he's probably one of the most precise congueros I've ever seen, just, just being honest. But if you want, you can add a little bit uh, more ghosting here when it comes to your dominant hand while you're doing these two different notes in this hand. So just to kind of, Give you an example of what just adding a little bit could sound. It's gonna sound like this.
yes, you can do a little bit of something like that. But again, that may be a little bit too much. You know, you wanna keep it nice and clean, nice and simple, kind of like how Georgie did it. This is just if in between, you wanted to kind of spice it up in between the simplicity with a little bit more complex. And all I'm really doing is just adding a ghost note before the closed slap here on the dominant hand and then doing a closed slap before doing the closed slap here. So kind of to slow it down. Nice, uh, nice little extra touch if you want to do it. Yes, if you want to do it. And like I said, I believe La Safra is played in 2-3 song clave, and in 2-3 song clave, the two tumba hits are actually played on the second hit on the three side of the clave. So if you're gonna play this in clave, the second hit that you do on the three side of the clave, that second hit should actually be the start of the two opens that you do right here on the tumba. Now to count it, it's gonna sound like this. got to love it man you gotta love it all right everybody let me know what you guys think about this tumbao it's kind of crazy again it's just more meant for a nice little bed a nice foundation to leave for somebody else to do during a bal solo or bongo solo or trumpet solo whatever it may be it's really meant to kind of just lay a foundation to not be so much of a distraction but at the same time kind of being relevant in the middle of a song you know and still being present but not so much and georgie padilla if you get to see this video thank you so much for everything that you've contributed not only to the percussion community but into my life trust me if it wasn't for that recording if it wasn't for un sonido bestial concert live with richie Day and bobby cruz if if i didn't listen to you man i don't think i would have had a good reference to kind of go to um, when I was first starting to play congas and it's kind of because of you that you know you you made me fall in love with this instrument and kind of made me realize how how clean someone can actually sound so thank you thank you so much for everything that you continue to contribute to all of us man I appreciate you we love you thank you so much man all right y'all y'all know what to do like subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video again I'm not going to be posting as much uh, I just I just can't wait till I could show you guys. I really cannot wait. So yes, just just be patient. Uh, I will see you guys next Thursday. I promise you that I will post something next Thursday. All right, y'all. Have a great weekend. Also, did you guys see Game of Thrones? I forgot to say something about that. I know that. I'm wearing this shirt and man, look, 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 look. I got my shoes and every, man, I'm not playing up in here. Game of Thrones, I've been waiting so long for this. Y'all don't even know. <laughs> all right, y'all, all right, y'all. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.